The old market town of Pocklington sits on the boundary between two very different parts of the East Riding of Yorkshire. This is an area which marks the border between the chalky foothills of the Yorkshire Worlds to the east and the generally flat Vale of York to the southwest. There is a quiet and rural beauty here, quite unique to anywhere else in the country. Famously, the Yorkshire Worlds have captivated artist David Hockney for a period of over 50 years and the celebrated artist has returned often to paint the rolling hills and agricultural spirit in vibrant seasonal colour. That very spirit which Hockney records so well that is the area's most defining characteristic. Despite their contrast in topography, both the Yorkshire Wolds and the western part of the Vale of York have a long-standing heritage of arable and mixed farming, notably sheep farming. In the East Riding, the majority of people have for centuries been employed in agriculture, which has shaped the rural character of its many small towns and villages. At the same time, and as is to be expected, the church buildings supporting these rural villages reflect the evolution of local demography and economy, community and spiritual provision over countless centuries. There is no doubt that the area's local churches, each different in many ways, capture the same timeless sense of rural community and agricultural spirit, similar to that found in Hockney's iPad drawings and canvas paintings, but here found in the eclectic ecclesiastical heritage. Those in the most immediate villages out of Pocklington are today divided into two groups. Firstly, the Barnby Moor group of churches, which includes St Botolph's at Hourthorpe, St Catherine's at Barnby Moor, St Martin's at Fangfoss, St Michael's at Thornton and St Martin's at Yappen. Secondly, there is the United Benefices of Pocklington Wold and Lonsborough Wold, otherwise known as the Pocklington Group of Churches, which include the churches at Pocklington, Great Givendale, Huggett, Millington, Nunburnham, Lonsborough, Burnby, Hayton and Shiptonthorpe. Church buildings in this part of the Vale of York and the Yorkshire Wolds differ greatly in their antiquity, size and style, Although admittedly it's problematic to generalise about these attributes, you don't tend to see a distinct pattern of building type until you reach the Holderness coast. These buildings may not constitute the most splendid examples of the East Riding's ecclesiastical heritage, but they're each equally deserving of attention as some of the oldest buildings at the western edge of the Yorkshire Wolds, and each of them have their own story. This video will focus on the Barnby Moor group of churches, the lower area of the benefice is a patchwork of wet meadows around the Lower Derwent Valley, including Melbourne and Thornton Ings, and extensive areas of sands largely occupied by former commons such as that at Owerthorpe. Historically, some villages southwest of Pocklington were sometimes distinguished as being in Spalding Moor, describing the low-lying wetland between the River Derwent and the edge of the Yorkshire Wolds. Barnby Moor still bears this title to its name, and Thornton was until relatively recently known as Thornton on Spalding Moor, a suffix still used by Holm on Spalding Moor, a local village on the other side of Market Wheaton. In contrast, the landscape around the northern area of the benefice near Thangfoss bears more in common with the gently rolling hills of the Yorkshire Wolds. St Botolph's Church stands at the northern end of the village of Allathorpe. Its early history is shared with that of St Michael's Church in Thornton, in that the pair was subject to the peculiar jurisdiction of the Dean of York from at least 1252, when a vicarage was ordained jointly at Thornton and Allathorpe, as recorded in the registers of Archbishop Walter Gray. In 1525, there were separate ministers supporting each church, but from the 17th century, the vicarage was usually held by one man. Previously, chapels at Allathorpe and Thornton had been given along with their mother church at Pocklington to the Archbishop of York in the first half of the 12th century, but unfortunately, next to nothing survives today of Allathorpe's medieval church apart from some suspect limestone rubble in the exterior masonry. Allathorpe is low-lying and flat as it spreads out into the Vale of York, meaning drainage has long been a problem in some areas of the parish. Although St Botolph's had been granted the right to burial in addition to Pocklington from 1360, it was in the early 15th century that frequent flooding was allegedly held to justify the granting of burial rights to Thornton, as some households were repeatedly being cut off. St Botolph's was completely rebuilt in 1876 by brothers J.B. and W. Atkinson of York, 
grandsons of Peter Atkinson, who carried on the architectural practice of John Carr, the foremost architect of the Georgian period in Yorkshire. Alongside building new churches, J.B. and W. Atkinson were responsible for the restoration of a large number of medieval church buildings in Yorkshire, carrying out unethical work which were denounced by many, including the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. St. Michael's Church of Thornton was originally a chapelry of Pocklinton, and as we have seen was subject to the jurisdiction of the Dean of York and ordained as a joint vicarage with Alaphorpe from the 13th century. In addition to the vicar, at least two parochial chaplains served with the incumbent in the 16th century. As the vicarage came to be held not by two, but one man in the early modern period, the incumbent also held the vicarage of Barnby Moor with Fangfoss during the 18th and early 19th centuries. The present church building dates largely to the 14th century, most of its interior fittings and furnishings are Victorian and fit comfortably within an altogether very intimate sacred space you can only find in a rural setting. Whilst it's difficult to date any part of the fabric much earlier than the 14th century, the small size of the nave and chancel allude to an earlier plan. The decayed church was repaired in the 16th century and at some point came to incorporate a former north aisle under one roof with the nave. This aisle may have accommodated a chantry, noted in the 1530s and 40s as being paid out of the local manor to the chaplain of the chantry at Thornton. A thorough restoration was conducted in 1890 to 1892 under the direction of Ewan Christian when the west end and the chancel arch appear to have been rebuilt and the roofs renewed. Ewan Christian is best known locally for his restoration of St Giles' medieval church in Skelton, just north of York. The early history of churches at Barnby Moor and Fangfoss are the same as that of Allathorpe and Thornton. A joint vicarage was ordained between the two in 1252 under the jurisdiction of the Dean of York. The old church has changed considerably and all that remains today of the medieval building is its handsome west tower a colourful patchwork of local stone. After 1480, St Catherine's would go on to endure centuries of ongoing decay and spells of inadequate repair until it was extensively rebuilt in the 19th century. After a heated vestry meeting in April 1850, it was decided that the nave and chancel were unfit for worship and that they should be completely rebuilt. However, this decision was not reached without some debate. The wardens favoured restoration, whilst the vicar and his wealthy supporters favoured an outright rebuilding of all but the medieval tower. The architect was Robert D. Chantrell, not J.B. Atkinson of York, who in fact wrote the dilapidation report, as Pevsner has incorrectly stated. More recently, a reordering of the church's interior was carried out by architect Ronald Sims between 1980 and 2001. The large churchyard around St Catherine's is extremely well managed to ensure the preservation of its many memorials and local wildlife. A truly wild area open to all who wish to enjoy its wildflowers and grass. St Catherine's oldest headstone is dated to 1703 and there are a variety of interesting epitaphs to be read throughout the burial ground. St Martin's Church is a fascinating mix of the very old and the very new, and its fabric really invites a closer inspection. The medieval church of St Martin's at Fangfoss consisted of a chancel with an apsidal east end and a nave with a south porch and west tower. In 1591, the apsidal chancel was noted to be in decay. In 1596, as in very great decay, and altogether ruinous by 1600. Any trace of the apsidal east end had gone by the early 19th century, and its former outline was only rediscovered when the church was being later rebuilt. Its former west tower at the time was partially constructed of brick, perhaps as a cheaper alternative to a full repair. This entire state of affairs was drawn by architect Robert D. Chantrell sometime very shortly before he conducted his work to rebuild the church in a Norman style between 1848 and 1850. When Chantrell arrived to rebuild the church, he found much of its original masonry left lying loose in the churchyard. Today, the majority of original 12th century sculpture and stonework can be seen most notably in the decorated south doorway and the corbel table, although aspects of both of these features have been restored. Deciding on how the church should be rebuilt, there may have occurred a similar debate as to that which took place at Barnby Moor in 1850, concerning the matter of preserving what had stood previously. 
It seems that the architect Robert Chantrell wanted to restore the church and keep much of its beautifully carved material, while the vicar, the Reverend Robert Taylor, who was involved in that debate at Barby Moor, favoured an outright rebuilding. Ultimately, the outside of the church contains the most original work upon completion, and the contrast between the interior and the exterior is telling of a possible difference in taste. Chantrell made a pleasing interior, but a plain one. The mighty chancel arch is quite an impressive architectural feature, and in my opinion stands not to overshadow the original work to be seen outside, but complements it very politely. St Martin's Church at Yapham is one of my favourite historic churches in the East Riding of Yorkshire, perhaps because it is so small and forgotten, and so little is known of its history, that I am time and time again drawn to revisit. Having served a small, isolated community for centuries, I am in awe of its survival and continued use. Unfortunately, it is one of the most decayed rural churches still used for worship in the local area, and possibly the entire county. There was a church at Yapham from at least roughly the 12th century, although it had not always been dedicated to St Martin. Many church dedications were changed in the 19th century for a variety of reasons, Yapham's church had been rededicated to St Martin from at least the 1850s, but was still locally referred to by some over 40 years later as the Church of St Nicholas. Before the 19th century, the very small church at Yapham had been attached to that of Pocklington, and the parish was described as a chapelry of Pocklington in 1892. Indeed, it too had long been subject to the same peculiar jurisdiction of the Dean of York as all the other churches in the benefice. Recent studies generally confirm that some aspects of the current building date to the 13th century, although much careful essential study is needed to confirm and shed light on much of its built history. The church was largely rebuilt in the 1770s, and then restored in the early 20th century by a local gentleman farmer, William Dixon Petch, a notable contribution of his being the east window with decorated glass, a commemorative piece in memory of his close family. However, St Martin's Church is presently in an extremely poor state of decay. In 2019, the estimated bill for repairs stood at £110,000. The church has an irresistible rural charm and must be protected at all costs.